Let's start adding roles to our new users. So what we'll do is we'll create an employer role and we'll attach it to the users when they register inside of our register method in the employer controller. And we'll be using identity role manager to help us do that. And keep an eye out for this link down in the description. This is going to be to the uh, role manager and we'll be referencing this later on in the video. And also keep an eye out for the snippets link. Uh, I'll have all the code that I create in this video in a snippets link. You just click on that link and then you can just copy and paste the snippets right into your project. So if we go back to here, let's go into our startup class like we did, did in prior videos. We need to configure that to use role manager. So if we go back to our project, open up our startup class. I'll just do it this way. Control P and then startup. And then uh, like we did in a prior video, we're going to add on to our builder here. And actually what, what we'll need to do is create a new instance of this identity builder. And the reason for that is we're going to pass some parameters into it. Let's take care of that first thing. So right here, I'll add it. I'll say builder equals new identity builder. And this identity builder here takes uh, two overloads. And the, the second one is the one I'm, I'm interested in. And this one right here, you pass in the type of uh, role. And that's what I'm after. So let's pass in the three parameters. The first one's going to be the builder type. So uh, builder user type actually type of and then that's going to be identity role so identity role there it is and then third one's going to be the services so builder services and that's all we need to do for that line now what we'll do is similar to this is we'll add our role manager so builder add role manager and the type is going to be role manager and identity role and close it up correctly and that's all we really need to do in our startup class uh, keep in mind I'll have these uh, this code as snippets down in the description just click on that link and you'll you could just copy and paste this if you want to now that we're done inside of our startup class we could save this and shut it down and let's open up our employer controller so control P and then employer there it is and then up here inside the constructor, we'll need to pull that in so we could use our, our role manager. Role manager. And then identity role. And then uh, you call it whatever you want. I'll call it role manager. Initialize this. And then like I did here, I'm just going to add on this. Copy this. And paste this. So now we should have access to a whole bunch of different uh, methods that role manager gives us. And we'll be checking that out pretty soon. I have that uh, in the, in the uh, browser and we'll check that out pretty soon. Let's go while we're here, knock out this register method. There's a couple things we need to do here. One is to check to see if the role uh, employer already exists in the database. So right here, I'll say, if not, await, and then we're gonna use our new role manager and then we'll, we'll check to see if that role exists. So role exists. And then all you need to do is pass in the role name. So that's going to be employer. And then now if this employer does not, this role employer does not exist in the database, then we'll go and add it. And we could use another method for that. That's um, role manager. Then create async. And to, to create a new role in the database, you just say new identity role and then what role name you want to create and that is employer and that's it for that so we still haven't done anything to the user all we're doing is just checking the database to see if a role exists or not and if it don't we add it now there's different ways you could do this by the way you don't have to do it in here like you could go and seed your database let's say when you first run your database for the first time or run your application for the first time you could seed your database with a whole bunch of users and you could seed your database with a whole bunch of roles. So you don't have to have all these if statements throughout your code, you know, between a bunch of different methods for now, just to keep it simple, I'm going to do it this way. And then later on when we're adding like employee roles, admin roles, I'm thinking of doing it a little different than I'm doing it here, but for now this will work. Now let's go and add our new role, our employer role to our new employer. 
And where do you want to do that? Well, you want to do that right after this if statement. So if we successfully created a new user, then we want to go and create or add a role to that user. And what we'll do is we'll go pluck that user from the database. So user from DB, I guess I'll call it equals, and then use your user manager to get that user. And we'll use define by name and then pass in the, the username, employer username. That should get us our user. Now we'll attach the, uh, the role to our new user. So user manager add to role async and then pass in your, your user from uh, DB, that one. And then uh, what do you want to attach? What role do you want to attach? And that's going to be employer. And I'm getting an error here because this has to be an await. I forgot to add that. Okay, so this should add it. Now let's go boot this up and then we'll go test in Postman, check our database, make sure our roles are in there before we move on to the next stage because we've got to add it to our tokens yet, but we'll get to that in a second. We'll just test our database, test it in Postman, and then also let's go and check out all the different methods you could use uh, before we move on to the next thing. So let's boot this up. Then uh, .NET run. Why this is starting, I'll go and uh, open up Postman. I have our database open and also uh, have Postman open. So let's go and create a brand new user. And when we create a new user now, we should have a role attached to that user. Let's go into our employer's controller. That's the method we just changed around, our create method. And then here we'll uh, change this over to like test two now, because that does not exist in the database. And then we'll keep it as raw. It will be JSON, application, JSON. All the settings are gonna be pretty much the same. And then this should create a brand new account and attach the employer role to it. So hit send. And that was successful. Okay. Now we're not gonna see a difference here. This should be the same. Now let's go into our database. We should see a difference in there. If we go in here and then let's check our um, users to make sure our new user is added and we'll click on this. And there's our brand new user. Go back up to here and let's check out our roles tables. So click on ASP net roles. Then here, uh, this is a good sign. So it created the role in our database because it didn't exist already. So now we have a role of employer. And then if we go down here to ASP net uh, user roles right here. And what this uh, table does it, is it act, acts as bridging. If you remember, our ID was OA, uh, and that's for our user. So our, our new, we created our new user, and we attached that role to our new user. So this, this table acts as bridging between our roles and our users, and that, that's uh, great. So everything is working inside of a database, and uh, we're able to create users and attach roles, so that's good. Now let's go and check out the documentation. I haven't showed you that yet, and this is the role manager. Again, you'll find that link down in the description. And we only used a couple methods, but as you can see here, there's a whole list of different methods you could use. Like we use the create async, um, role exists. We use that as well, but you could up update roles. Just, uh, I highly recommend checking out this page. You might, if you're trying to figure out something, you might be able to uh, check out this page. It might help you out. Now let's go uh, check out notepad again. Now we knocked out these three. Now what we'll want to do is add our role to the token. So when the user logs in, we're going to attach their roles to their, their token. And then that will help us later on to check to see if they're allowed to get access to certain APIs within, within our application. Let's take care of this next. Open up your auth controller, control P, and then auth controller, there it is. And then inside of our JWT token generator machine, we'll add on the roles to the user's token when they log in. And to do that, we'll go out and we'll get all the roles first thing. So roles equals, and we'll use our user manager. So user manager, get roles, there it is. And then all you need to do is pass in the, the user info or the user. 
Okay, so we should have a list of roles that belong to that user now. Now we'll loop through each one of them and attach it to our, our token. So uh, for each role in roles, and we'll do, um, oh, I, I gotta assign a weight to this and we gotta turn our method into a async method now. So this is gonna be a weight and then that should be an error for this. So we'll make this an async task of string. And string. Okay. So uh, now we can loop through each one of these and attach it and uh, attach it to our claims. I'm going to do similar to this actually. So I can just copy that. So claims dot add and then just paste this in here. Instead of name, it's going to be role, and then uh, copy this, and it's going to be role for this right here. Close it up correctly, and uh, this is going to be a list now. Change this over to list. Type of claim. Okay, that's pretty much all we need to do to attach our tokens, or actually attach our roles to our tokens. Now uh, save this. Let's boot up the server again. So open up the command line, navigate into your your API. So API .NET run, and let's check this out in Postman. We'll log in in Postman. Let's log in into our new account. So we open up our auth controller, and then uh, so it's going to be auth API auth login, and the settings are going to be pretty much the same inside of our body. Instead of logging in with our old account, we'll log in with our new account, and then raw JSON application JSON. So hit send, we should get a token back. Now this token should have our employer role added to it or attached to it. So copy this, and to test that, you just go to jaw.io, and I already have that open, and that's right here, and just paste in your token. And right here is our role and it's being attached to our token now. So that's good. So now what we could do is use this token to protect um, APIs by by roles now. And I'll show you, show you that right now. So let's go into our values controller, I guess. Kind of the values controller that will protect one of those APIs. So, so hit control P, then value uh, controller. There it is. And then inside of this method, we'll just change this one around, this authorized attribute. And what we're gonna add is roles now. So we're protecting this API by roles. So it would be roles equals, and then uh, employer. Let's go and test to make sure that only employers can get access to this API now. We'll save it. Make sure you reboot your, your API. So uh, control C. Then .NET run, run, okay. And then if we go back to Postman, and then uh, this would actually be good, but let's just go and hit send one more time. Just get a fresh token. Okay, copy this. And then we'll go call our values controller. And then the settings will be pretty much the same, but we'll pass in this new token we got. This should allow us into this API because this token has the employer role to it. So add it to it and good. So this is working. We're getting back an empty array. We don't have any values in the database. Uh, so the it's coming back empty, but this is working if you're getting an empty array. But now let's check it with a token that does not have the role, the employer role added to it. And the test that we'll just go back to our login and uh, this test account has no roles added to it. So this has no employer role at all. We'll hit send and then go copy this token again. Copy and then go back here and paste that in there. And this should uh, not allow us in. So hit send. And that's what I'm looking for. 403 forbidden. So you could protect APIs by roles now. Now in the next video, we're gonna actually start adding policies and protecting APIs using policies. And I'll show you, I'll show you that in the next video. So I'll see you then.